Hello YouTube, my name is Hero and today I'm going to be reviewing Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. In this review, I will not be reviewing Stormblood alone, but rather the entire game itself as a package with Stormblood included. With that being said, let's begin the review. Final Fantasy XIV is a well-crafted and almost perfectly optimized game. During my entire playtime, no matter how many players were on the screen, I never experienced one single frame drop. That being said, the game is a few years old, so some of the textures and character models may seem a bit dated. Regardless of that, this game looks solid and runs like a faucet, and the beautiful art direction and design of the world that Square has created is truly a marvel to behold even after being nearly four years old. What pushes Final Fantasy XIV's presentation over the wall for me is just the sheer amount of attention to detail there is. Every town, every village, every hub, bustling with things to do and people to see. The user interface, which is very important to any MMO, is very well organized, sleek, and completely customizable to boot. Though the system menus are a little disorienting. Character creation is solid, and even though there are plenty of games to do it better, Final Fantasies is definitely adequate enough to allow you to customize your character enough to differentiate yourself. That, on top of the glamour system, which allows you to change your outfits to whatever you like, adds an added layer of complexity to having your own unique look. But all of these things fall short to the masterpiece known as the game soundtrack. The music changes from region to region, town to town, and dungeon to dungeon, perfectly matching the theme and feel of each area. The boss fight music is simply breathtaking, and Stormblood's music pushes the envelope to further providing music that is honestly so good, it almost feels like it deserves more than to be only heard in this game. Usually, Storylines take a backseat to MMOs, becoming simply an optional feature for players to participate in if they choose to do so. However, in this situation, the storyline takes center stage in what is a truly interesting narrative that tackles real and relatable topics. I know that you're only trying to protect yourselves because you feel frightened and alone. But that's how we all feel, don't you see? These topics are usually written in text, unfortunately. Scenes are rarely voice acted. But when they are, the dubbing is acceptable for MMO standards, and the story itself is satisfying enough to recommend at least giving it a chance. Unfortunately, you don't have much of a choice. As I said earlier, most MMOs make the story a sort of an optional feature, but that is not the case here. If you wish to partake in any of Final Fantasy XIV's in-game content, you must complete the story in its entirety. That is including the story of Heaven Sword, the previous expansion. For a new player who wishes to partake in Stormblood content, you're looking at weeks of constant gameplay to get to the end game, and that's if you skip all the cutscenes. In order to circumvent this, Square made the questionable decision of allowing players to purchase an item that skips them through the story up to where Stormblood starts, as well as other optional purchases to skip to level 60. If you want to get into Stormblood right away, these options are pretty much a requirement, which makes me wonder why Square Enix felt the need to charge players extra money for this rather than just allow it to happen if the player chose to do so. Needless to say, the entry fee into Stormblood is quite steep for a newcomer. In the past several years, the MMO industry has moved away from tab target MMOs toward more fast paced action MMOs. Final Fantasy sticks to the ground and keeps the tab targeting system, a system that would feel absolutely dated under normal circumstances. I'm happy to say that that is not the case here. Final Fantasy's gameplay is absolutely solid, punishing and fair all at the same time. Rewarding players who prioritize group play and essentially making it easier for their teams to succeed by following mechanics that are just intimidating enough to be challenging, but not so difficult that the task feels impossible. Overall, the gameplay is incredibly fun and fine-tuned, allowing the player to swap between classes outside of battle at will. This really makes the experience feel more flexible. Though you have to level up the characters again, there is nothing stopping you from taking on a different challenge once you've got enough out of the first. 
There are, of course, various different ways to play the game. Whether it be exploring the open world, engaging in the game's dramatically in-depth crafting and gathering systems, or just participating in some good old-fashioned PvP. While the PvP is clearly not the selling point of Final Fantasy XIV, Stormblood makes an attempt at reworking it. Though it is much more enjoyable than it ever was, I still wouldn't suggest you play this game if you are interested in PvP. PvE, however, is where this game shines and the vast and intriguing dungeons are simply a spectacle to behold. The highlight of Final Fantasy XIV's gameplay is undoubtedly the boss fights. These moments are where the game is at its best, delivering content that expects so much of every player on your team while at the same time doesn't make excuses for your mistakes. These bosses expect you to be on your A game at all times and the experience is downright fantastic. Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood is an excellent MMO, one of the best ever. It is a true testament of what the genre is able to deliver to players. Though it does have its flaws, they are nothing in comparison to its strides that stretch far and wide. As I stated before, the industry has moved away from tab target MMOs, but that didn't stop Square Enix from creating one at all. In the most surprising way possible, Final Fantasy XIV has become the best tab target MMO on the market.